Good morning, this is Kai Viola coming at you with another video. Here we go. Coffee and Jesus. So I love the word of God. It's the bread of life. And there's something about our mind, as Romans 12, 2 says, be not conformed to the world, so even the world's ways of thinking, because it's always counter to what God has for us. And God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. But we get to know his thoughts. We get to know the things of God as we get to open up the word of God and, this, and experience the spirit of God and his truth. So the truth will saturate and fill you with peace, God's peace that trans under, transcends understanding. So we can't even understand fully what the peace of God is, but there is a peace that surpasses our understanding. So we do not lean on our understanding, but we trust in God. So what's put in my heart is Isaiah 26, 3. It says, um, he keeps him in perfect peace whose mind is fixed on him because he trusts in the Lord. And then it says, "For trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. And in other scriptures, it says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So whatever ha is happening in the world, it's always changing or things are happening and we have adversity and challenges, but God is always this, is the same. So he never changes. But he has a way of doing things in our lives. He has a plan and a purpose for everything. And we just have to keep our minds fixed on him. So our minds can get pulled in different directions. In fact, in the Passion Translation, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it actually says this. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. So there's lots of different worries. And we can be pulled in lots of different directions. It happens all the time, every day, so many people. And I just feel terrible for so many people. It actually is frustrating my, for myself to see it happen so often. But that's, that's the issue is that there's this different in whose mind is fixed on the Lord and whose mind is not fixed on the Lord. They're fixed on many different things. It's very easy to get pulled in different directions of the worries of this world. Even Jesus says, do not worry about tomorrow for today has enough of its own trouble. And people are always worrying about tomorrow. But how about just today, dealing with today and trusting in the Lord and even inviting God for help? Because in another part of scripture, it says that God will actually give us instructions at night. God wants to instruct you. He wants to counsel you. He wants to give you wisdom and revelation. He wants to show you in the way you should go because he has the path of life already made for you. And there's boundary lines that are set in place. I believe this is in Psalm 16. He sets the boundaries in pleasant places. So you want him to set the boundaries for you and you want to keep your mind fixed on him. And so Philippians 4 Actually, we'll talk about how we should switch our mind to this. So don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer. So how many of us really saturate our everyday lives in prayer? It's very important to have a prayer life, to be talking to God. To, and, and Peter talks about cast your anxieties upon the Lord, for he cares about you. Cast your worries. Cast your, you know, your concerns. Whatever that you're going through... You tell God, listen, this is what I'm going through, and you need to pull it, pull it through for me. <laughs> because God will do it. God is going to make a way. And a lot of times we have also unrealistic expectations. So we expect God in our finite, limited mind set of how we think God is in a box. That's not the case. God is way beyond us. He actually surprises me all the time, all the time. And I love it. I love learning about God because he's so much beyond than what we can think or imagine. But you can get a glance because you can think and imagine God's given that ability to you. However, we always have to stay humble. And that's the biggest thing too. That's something that I, I fight all the time. It is even like so-called spiritual pride. Even when you get knowledge, it says that when, when you get knowledge, you boast. So you don't want to get into a place of too much pride either. But you just want to continually trust in God as a, like a child with a childlike faith. You humble yourself before before all my, the um, hand of the Almighty, and he will exalt you in due season. So to continue Philippians 4, um, 6, be saturated in prayer throughout each day, 
offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. And that's a big part of God's will that I've learned and concluded too. And by the word of God, it says to be thankful. That's the will of God for us to be thankful. So wherever we are, whatever we're doing, we can always be thankful to God. We can just be thankful to be even alive. Even though this world is a broken world, it's messed up. People are messed up. Things are messed up. Corrupt system, broken systems, all sorts of systems is whack. I know. But God is still faithful and he's true. Everything he says is true. And that's why we can have our hope in him because he is true and faithful. And then it says, tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. As I've talked about before, Jesus Christ is our bridge to Father God, to God himself, the fullness, deity of God and his glory. We are connected through Jesus Christ. And that's why it's a personal relationship. So something that I've come across to too is that, yes, people can recognize that there is God, as Paul actually talks about in Romans 1.20, that we can see the, the invisible qualities of God through his creation. So no one has an excuse, actually. If we look at creation, we can actually conclude that there is a creator. Because these things don't just come up out of nowhere. This is a great revelation for people to have. And then you uh, come to a personal relationship with the one true living God through Jesus Christ, the testimony of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, sent by God for the forgiveness of sins, died on the cross for our, our sins, so that we may have access to everlasting life, so that our names will be written in the book of life. That's where a personal relationship comes with God. So everyone can actually acknowledge that there's a God by looking at creation, but then there's an encounter and experience of the personality of God through Jesus Christ. You cannot understand and experience God's personality without understanding and knowing his son. We see the father through the son because in, in the, the son is in the father and the father is in the son. And the power of the Holy Spirit that gives us that experience and that revelation. So even as we go about in the world, we need the Holy Spirit and lean on the Holy Spirit to guide us and to influence us so that even others can experience the Holy Spirit in us. Because it's not just about ourselves and we can't just do anything just on our own. We can, but it's powerless. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that we need. So I ask God, I need him all the time. So just to continue, this is where, it's, this is where I want to get to. Philippians 4, 8. So keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind. And fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. So there's something about shifting our thoughts, keeping our mind on him, thinking of these good things. And so in also 2 Corinthians chapter 10, it talks about how we have to take every thought captive under the obedience of Jesus Christ. So there is, so the, as I said, Jesus Christ shows us the personality of God. We get to experience God. Jesus is actually in full authority. It says that God the Father gave all authority to his Son. And the Son of God, Jesus, he actually gives the authority, his authority, to the church, to the believers of Jesus Christ. We're actually the ones in charge, that the gates of hell cannot prevail. So we actually have to say so, and we have to know and understand our authority. But we also have to come under the obedience of Jesus Christ including our thoughts. So the, the, a lot of warfare is happening in people's minds and our thoughts, and we need to refix our thoughts on him. And that is a daily, active, diligent activity. Like we actually have to take every thought captive under the obedience of Jesus Christ. And what happens is in this, in this natural world, in this broken world, we get pulled in different directions by lots of different voices, opinions, even our own reactions. So we have lots of different reactions. And for some reason, there's this natural pull to negativity and to doubt and to fear, anxiety and depression and all sorts of things. So we have to experience God. We have to seek him. We have to experience him. We have to be transformed by him. We have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So there's a diligence in renewing our mind. And I, I, again, I encourage you, seek him every day because it's a diligent activity every single day that we would be renewed. 
and you can see, you will see, and you already see, there is a clear difference in whose mind is completely, um, you know, pull, push and pull from the things of this world constantly. And so naturally, and I clearly see it, there's always anxiety and worries and anxious thoughts and all kinds of emotions that are all over the place. But there is a shifting of keeping your mind on, on God. Now, the reality is, yeah, we go through these things. So that's why we need each other. We need to help each other. But we need to cast our cares upon the Lord because he can. he's the one that can really handle all of our stress and anxiety. And he has a plan and purpose. And then we have to speak life into our situations, too. That's why praying out loud is important, that you can speak the word of God, speak these things, even saying, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. As you speak that, is happening in the spirit realm and in the natural. So there's so, so there's something about shifting our thoughts, renewing our mind, and then speaking that truth and revelation. And letting that revelation light come into manifest in our lives, in our daily lives. So thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for your spirit, for sending the Holy Spirit that you are with us, that you never leave us or forsake us. That you encourage us, that you build us up and not tear us down but that you convict us in righteousness. And I, Lord, I just thank you for aligning us in your righteousness and your justice and your love and your grace. Thank you, Lord, for helping us renew our minds so that we may be more gracious to each other and loving each other and gentle so that we can take every, captive every thought to the obedience of you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, just help us renew our minds every single day. Teach us and show us in the way we should go. For in you, we entrust our lives. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for your peace that surpasses all understanding. And may we be filled with the peace of God today and every day. In Jesus' name, God bless you, and I'll see you next time.